And now, without further ado, I would like to turn the house to the motion that sits before us, which is this house believes a university must be a safe space. And I would like to welcome Melissa Hinckley, Keeble College, the librarian-elect, to open the case for the proposition of this motion. So when I mentioned to lots of individuals around Oxford that I was speaking in today's debate, a lot of them sighed before wishing me luck, especially those who identify as LGBTQ or a minority ethnicity. It wasn't disappointment or tiredness with this debate that prompted that reaction. It was fear and anger. It's the fear that once again, a group will vote that safe spaces limit free speech when really they impose ground rules for discussions which might encompass ideas about identity and lived experience, and are an area that always requires sensitivity. For those who use university as a ground in which they are consolidating their identity, they are scared that once more they will be made to endure their identities becoming academic debate. The ground rules imposed by the forms of safe spaces are simple and also allow the room to absorb that what they are about to discuss might be serious for others. Look at the forms of the house on your order paper. Would you disagree with ground rules for discussion in this chamber? The House of Commons has a speaker. Would you disagree with there being someone who maintains order in the debate and promotes engagement with a specific idea rather than allowing random name calling or rhetoric? In most cases, these ground rules already exist. You've just become accustomed to them. In all cases of ground rules, they exist to make discussion easier and not harder. Uh, and to continue in this vein, and to make our discussion more structured this evening, it falls on me to introduce the opposition. So Molly Greenwood is a first-year German and Italian student at St Hilda's College and the Union's Director of Research. Do not let her calm and nice demeanour fool you, however. Described repeatedly by our president as a fierce taskmaster, Molly instills fear into the heart of any committee member who has not fact-checked correctly. I look forward to figuring out how she has managed to find any actual facts to oppose the motion this evening. Um, <laughs> next up, we have Peter Tatchell, a prolific human rights campaigner and activist for the LGBTQ rights group Outrage. Uh, he is also the director of the Peter Tatchell Foundation, which seeks to promote and protect, protect the human rights of individuals, communities and nations. I look forward to hearing his thoughts on the motion this evening. Finally, uh, closing the motion tonight is Peter Hitchens. He is an award-winning journalist and blogger for The Mail Online. Famous for opposing political correctness, his most popular quote on Goodreads, when I did a quick Google this morning, uh, is as follows. Is there any point in public debate in a society where hardly anyone has been taught how to think while millions have been taught what to think? Clearly not all is lost, Mr Hitchens, otherwise you'd have left by now, and I'm sure we all look, to more rhetoric, look forward to more rhetoric this evening. Uh, Mr. President, these are your speakers for the opposition tonight, and they are most welcome. So I would argue that safe space is a, is a phrase that is frequently and willfully misunderstood in discussions of university, academia and debate today, and can mean wildly different things for the marginalised student than it does for the average university professor, 90%, 90 of whom are white. Uh, a university must be a safe space. It is ultimately a place of education. It must provide a learning environment through which, broadly speaking, 18 to 21 year old students living away from families for the first time, perhaps coming from vastly different backgrounds and experiences, can begin to figure out who they are without being made to feel afraid or talked over. It is not about changing the content of what is taught, nor is it about limiting discussion. It is simply about placing ground rules for discussion that draw the line between free speech and hate speech. A safe space 40 years ago originally connoted a literal location for marginalised people, perhaps those who are LGBTQ or those from minority ethnicities, to come together to discuss how to best achieve liberation from their historical oppression. I say historical, but when there are camps detaining gay men in che Chechnya uh, and shocking levels of police brutality in the USA, it's not hard to see why safe spaces have endured and evolved in our modern society, becoming needed once more. 
Here, I'd like to draw the distinction between these safe spaces and the one we are discussing today in the university system. An online group or specific group of people who meet to talk for a certain reason, usually liberation, and impose rules on that group is in its way its own ecosystem of a safe space. By entering those particular types of safe spaces to turn action against suffering into an intellectual debate for your own satisfaction, you run the risk of perpetuating or becoming complicit in that suffering, or what is colloquially online known as a troll. To return to the university then, trigger warnings and content notes being included in lecture spaces and classes do not indicate a special snowflake generation who are woefully ill-equipped to deal with the harsh realities of society. We are all used to having the following images maybe upsetting as the standard on new segments. It instead allows someone the ability to opt out of studying or engaging with something that they might find traumatic, ahead of starting the hypothetical and abstract conversation on the topic. I think many would consider these warnings a common courtesy and human decency. They hurt nobody in their usually very brief inclusion. The point of inclusion is that it encourages the participants to briefly reflect on the serious nature of the topic they are about to engage with, whether that be sexual assault, a disgustingly common issue at university with one in three women reportedly affected, uh, or racial di discrimination, another ridiculously common issue at university with one in six students reportedly affected, or homophobia and transphobia with more than a third of students who identify as LGBTQ fearing violence at their university. When it's likely that someone's sitting in a large lecture th theatre, or let's be real, in your very small college class, has either received direct or indirect discrimination, should they not be at least prepared for engagement with that issue in a situation where other students might debate something that comes very close to their heart? I'm not saying that you have to have had an experience to talk about it, um, but the ability to sensitively and carefully discuss cannot be predicted. Instead, all that people who may be affected are asking for is not that the debate be halted, but instead that discussions are headlined so that they can decide whether or not they would like to participate. Free speech is, in its many forms, not even close to being curtailed in this instance. It is a simple and straightforward case of someone opting out of a conversation. In an undergraduate university space, which I restate is made up of students who are growing their identities and their ideas, they can participate if they feel they would like to still, but the minority who feel personally affected have the option to prepare. Indeed, last year's Owsley Welfare Survey of the university revealed that the negative impact of university life upon students who did not identify as white, male, straight or fully able was significantly raised. In every case, there was a large gap in experience with, for example, 38% of men saying they found their university experience had a negative impact on their personal well-being, compared to 52% of women. The figure for LGBTQ students is 59% negative experience compared to 38% negative experience, 38 negative experience for those who do not identify as such. Considering this concrete evidence from Alzu that those minority groups experience more mental health issues at Oxford, why are we attempting to criticise the very small practices that are put in place to allow fruitful and kind discussion to take place? More than allowing discussion to take place, safe spaces build the confidence of those who may otherwise stay quiet without the danger of being spoken over or the possibility for a confident yet ignorant speech to impose on them, students may instead find that they are able to articulate better within university spheres what they thought, given the opportunity to contribute in a way that encourages sensitive reflection. They actually encourage the highest standard of education, engaging with issues in a way that makes them comfortable and helping these individuals to learn better. Ultimately, a safe space is not a barrier to free speech, as I'm sure will be argued tonight on the opposition, far from it. I would also like to say that free speech in, it def in its definition does not encompass language that is racist, bigoted, misogynistic, transphobic, classist, homophobic or ableist. By UK law, free speech does not include speech that is harmful or endangers another person. I believe imposing limitations and boundaries on discussions enables them to happen with more dignity and with equal way weighting being given to each participant. Some opinions are not better than others, but a safe space is designed for the university and simply connotes a heading that a discussion may be sensitive. It encourages students to think doubly hard about whether what they're saying could be harmful and whether it is actually what they think at all. To turn directly to the motion, arguing that university must be a safe space seems simple. 
It should go without saying that a university system, which proclaims itself committed to allowing students to discuss ideas, should be a space in which those ideas are discussed mindful of all who could be present. It is where ideas are challenged and tested, but learning to confront your personal struggles is probably not going to happen because of a class you were silently made to sit through. I urge you all to vote with the motion tonight in a vote for, uh, for kindness, compassion and humility. Thank you.